So earlier this month, the Kappa Kappa Psi National Honorary Band Fraternity made headlines nationwide after revoking the charter for its IOTA new chapter at Alabama A&M University. And the fraternity said in statements that the revocation of the charter, the expulsion of its members and a 20 year moratorium placed on the school welcoming any charter coming back to the school was a result of hazing related to their new member presentation show, quote unquote, which violated both university and Kappa Kappa Psi policies. So some students and alumni who support A&M, they began to cry racism for the decision. University officials publicly disagreed with the sanction and they indicated that they are considering an appeal of the decision, but no details about the hazing allegations or the investigation were ever released. So in moments like this, we got to go to the numbers to see if any trends emerge. And unfortunately, there are some numbers which may shock a lot of people. Of Kappa Kappa Psi's established 334 chapters nationwide, 45 of them are stationed at historically black colleges and universities. And of those 45, 25 are currently inactive on probation or on investigative review. Now, let's look at the data on KK Psi's predominantly white schools. That's 289 that are counted among the total membership and 98 of those chapters are currently inactive. And that's good for 33 percent. So if we're looking at 55 percent of black colleges are suspended or under review, and that's in comparison to just 33 percent at PWIs at a group that is outnumbering the HBCUs by more than six to one. This is something that's hard to deal with. And we don't know if every chapter that is inactive or had its charter revoked or the reason for those 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 inactive inactive chapters. But needless to say, that's a pretty big disparity. So how do you get to those kind of numbers in an organization that's 100 years old, but more than its age has actually earned a respected and branded presence in the HBCU community, despite being not founded at an HBCU. It was founded at Oklahoma State University. Why would a fraternity that receives a significant portion of its membership revenue and its cultural popularity from black students and black musicians tolerate this kind of imbalance in its representation? So you got to kind of look at leadership for that, right? Who's running the organization? Who makes those decisions? And when you do that, the picture that you get is even bleaker and even whiter than the story told by the chapters. None of KK Psi's national officers are African-American. None of them are graduates of HBCUs. If you look at the fraternity's board of trustees, only one African-American is serving on a whole group of non-HBCU graduates. And that's chairman George White. If you look at the fraternity's district governors, which oversees KK Psi and Tau Beta Sigma sorority, their regional activity, there's only one African-American, and that's Kaylin White from uh, Virginia State University. And if you even look at the staff at KK Psy's national headquarters, there's one brother who serves in that, in that office, and that's Robert Bratcher, a North Carolina A&T State alum. So based on the numbers, and without having any insight into the culture or the processes of the fraternity, it's easy to see why black colleges might be at a disadvantage when it comes to discipline, or sanctions or appeals for bad behavior, or even having the interests of HBCUs and black student musicians represented in their governance. Who can or would stick up for HBCUs having a respectable place in the fraternity if none of us are there to lend a voice to the issues? Who in the, in the ranks of KK Psi even thinks about diversity from these kind of angles and not just how many races of people can march together at halftime? But more importantly, what position are HBCUs going to take to demand change for this?